but one of the best film festivals in the country kicks off October 7th in the Hamptons, and it's filled with must-see movies you won't want to miss. Here with a preview is our friend Eric Davis. Welcome, Eric. You know I love when you're here, so happy, you know, welcome to be here today. I'm glad to be here. Uh, so listen, we got a lot to talk about. Yes. You know, I love the Hamptons Film Festival. You love it. What is it about the Hamptons Film Festival? I mean, it's, it's, so special? it's the perfect time to take a ride out east. The weather is gorgeous. It's also an intimate film festival yes. full of film lovers, great community, and the programming. You know, they, they show you films that are destined to be nominated for the Oscars. You get to see them before anyone else. Right. Uh, just a great festival all around. Right, so let's break it down and, and talk about what's happening on opening night. Yes. Just kicking it off. A powerful documentary called The First Wave. This is going to follow frontline workers uh, inside one of the hardest hit hospitals in Queens, New York, the Long Island Jewish Medical Center, and their quest to sort of contain the virus inside the hospital and outside the hospital. Uh, this is just going to be emotional across the board for everyone there. Um, you know, it's right in our backyard yeah. and uh, and I think this is probably going to be one of many documentaries that we see that cover just different time periods throughout the pandemic. Yeah, the trailer alone had me like, uh, like uh, almost crying for just sure. from watching it. Yeah, and famed documentarian Alex Gibney, he produced the film as well. Okay, so you know, like you mentioned, the great thing about this festival is you get to see things, like these award contenders before anybody else. So yes. talk to us about some things we should be watching out for. All right, well, Spencer is, is a big yes. one. Uh, everybody buzzing about Kristen Stewart in this role. She was likely to be nominated for an Oscar. She plays the late Princess Diana, set in 1991 over the Christmas holiday, and Diana is grappling with uh, her marriage, which is falling apart to Prince Charles. This film takes us inside her point of View, what she was going through uh, in this moment in time. It's directed by Pablo Lorraine, who also did 2016's Jackie, oh, which right. starred Natalie Portman. Yep. Uh, similar, American royalty grappling with the loss of her uh, husband, President Kennedy. Um, and so we'll see. Natalie Portman nominated for an Oscar for that. Oh, I think Kristen's we'll see next. About Kristen too. So Power of the Dog, talk to me about this one. This is a revisionist Western from director Jane Campion. Stars Benedict Cumberbatch as this charismatic, super intimidating rancher whose worldview is thrown off when his brother brings home a new wife and child. Kirsten Dunst and Cumberbatch getting a high, high, high grades for this one, probably going to be nominated. And director Jane Campion, who you might remember, won an Oscar for her writing in 1992's The Piano. Oh, yes. Also nominated that's, for director. That's how I knew that name. Yes, she's great. Yeah. I think we're going to see her back, potentially nominated again for best director oh, for this cool. film. And now Joaquin Phoenix, I feel like he hasn't been around since The Joker, but now he's going to be in Come on, come on. What, what should we expect from this? Yeah, a lot lighter than the Joker. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be, this is directed by Mike Mills, and it's about a man who is uh, tasked with looking after his nephew and going on a cross-country trip, and they sort of go through this transformational bond between the two of them. And I think it's sort of about the poignant relationship between adults and children. Yeah. And this is going to be a much lighter Joaquin Phoenix, uh, a lot of more relatable Joaquin Phoenix than nice we saw in the Joker. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. great, though. He's <laughs> he great. Is, he's really good in everything. But um, there's also some out-of-the-box films that we should see. Talk to us about The Lost Daughter. Yeah, well, The Lost Daughter is one of two films we have from amazing actresses who are making their directorial debuts this fall. The Lost Daughter is from Maggie Gyllenhaal. Oh, really? Yes, as director, and it stars Olivia Coleman as a celebrated college professor who goes on a seaside vacation, becomes obsessed with a young mother and her child, the young mother played by Dakota Johnson. Uh, Olivia Coleman's name is always in the awards Love conversation. Her. So, so much, maybe yeah. again. And then we also have Passing from uh, actress Rebecca Hall, who's making her directorial debut about two biracial women, uh, childhood friends who meet back up in adulthood and realize that one of them is passing as a white woman and how that complicates their relationship. Great performances from yeah, Ruth Negga like really and Tessa one. Thompson. Uh, closing night. Closing night is Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch. Yeah. We've been waiting for this one. Wes yeah. Anderson back, the eccentric uh, film uh, filmmaker behind stuff like The Grand Budapest Hotel and yeah, The Royal course. Tenenbaums. Uh, great ensemble. Same feel as all his other films. Same too, feel. Trailers, Love Letter to Journalism. Uh, yeah. Great ensemble cast. Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, Timothy Chalamet. Literally everyone is in this film, uh, and it takes place Francis at a... Francis Dorman. Yeah, Francis yeah, Dorman, yeah. and it's about journalists, and uh, so it's Wes Anderson. See it. Go yeah, see, we gotta it. see it. All right, be sure to follow Eric on social media for Everything Entertainment and the Hamptons International Film Festival runs October 7th through the 13th. For tickets, more info, screenings, and events, head to HamptonsFilmFest.org. Eric, thank you so much for breaking it down for us. Thank you.